I've been working within this uh, field for many, many years. Sure. So uh, please come and contact me after the uh, presentation if you want to know something more. I've been on the customer side for many years, building uh, business intelligence, planning systems, uh, predictive insights. Uh, Let's generate some uh, more data. So if you want to contribute to the conversation, put in some uh, thing in Twitter, and I'll promise to retweet it, whatever you bring in. And uh, please remember to mention my name uh, on this one. So basically, IBM is looking at uh, something called the inside economy. And uh, that's a huge topic. And I'll only have 14 minutes left to define it. but. Uh, Three ways to structure this. One is the uh, looking at the data. Data is transforming industries and professions uh, quite a lot. We haven't seen the tip of the iceberg of what's coming, so uh, we need to think of how to actually handle all those data. The second one, the world is being reinvented in codes. It's all about we are taking whatever we had, bringing it into the cloud system. We are putting everything on the net, everything on the grid. Even your coffee machine at home is going to get on the grid. So uh, we need lots of new code for that one. And the third one is the most exciting one, is the uh, cognitive era, uh, where the digital intelligence meets digital business. Wow. Let's see how that goes. So as we already saw in some of the presentations, uh, digital disruption is, is, is here right now. We've seen lots of those companies uh, doing some amazing uh, stuff. You all know the names up here. And uh, you also have a local uh, one here in uh, Sweden, Spotify, which is also should actually be on this uh, list. There's one thing they have in common, all those companies. They are extremely good at creating data and getting insight out of the data and taking action based on the data. Take an example as Netflix. They know everything about you. They know when you stop the uh, House of Cards episode. They know when you're going back and forth in the episode. They know exactly what time in the day you're watching uh, House of Cards, how many episodes you're looking at it, etc., etc. They know even know if you like sex or violence in the House of Cards. So, these companies are extremely good at getting inside out of the data, and they could basically do whatever uh, they are doing. They're focusing on the data. So we need someone who's actually very good at looking at uh, these uh, kinds of data and being innovative in, in this area. And luckily enough, uh, Fast Company defined uh, the top 10 most in innovative companies in big data. And I agree with the comment uh, early on today that uh, we shouldn't use big data as a term. It's just data. We even see uh, people in the US removing the word big data from the CV because they don't want to be associated with big data. This is kind of interesting. So big data is, is so last year. <laughs> so IBM is certainly innovative according to fast companies. And if you want to sh show, uh, see how exactly we are innovative, uh, you can come to the, our demo room uh, just outside here to see what fast companies defines as in innovative, uh, a product called Watson Analytics. And if you don't have time to come by, go into watsonanalytics.com and get your free uh, account on that one. One million users has already done that. But we are looking very much at the uh, cognitive part of the data. We're getting so much data, we can't get enough out of the data just by creating a uh, BI report. We will never find the goal in our data. And we can use all kinds of predictive tools and prescriptive tools on trying to get the optimal uh, uh, thing out of our data. But we need new methods going forward. That's why IBM is investing so much in, uh, in the cognitive part of it. You've probably heard about Watson. And we're trying to build computers that is more like the human brain. So back in the old days, we had to learn how to interact with computers. Nowadays, we interact with computers in natural language. We ask questions. And this is what we're doing with Watson Analytics. You ask questions to your data. You don't go in and learn how to use a program ask questions and you will get the answer. One of the big things with, uh, with the human brain is also the capability to actually go through an insane amount of data and only stop up with something interesting pops up. It's 
basically just like when my wife is telling me about how her day was, I can easily filter it in and out. But if she suddenly mentions something about the car, I will immediately stop up because I know, oh, that's probably affecting me. That's very important information. So I'm actually capable of listening to whatever she tells me and then stop up if I hear, hear a specific word. And that's what we are trying to do with all the social media, the unstructured data we are bringing into the system, filter out all the noise and only focusing on what's important. And the third one with cognitive is the uh, capability that the system has to learn something. So I don't need to tell the system whatever it needs to do. It can actually learn by itself, like the human brain. That's a huge advantage when, uh, when dealing with large amount of, of, of data. So data is, uh, is very important. We will see insanely amount of data coming our way, especially with the uh, Internet of Things, uh, with all the sensors coming on. We can lock whatever we want. And even, yes, the coffee machine comes on the grid uh, because I can control it from my uh, iPhone, start the coffee machine, define how much it should grind the uh, beans, etc. But it will also create an insane amount of data. Interesting is also the traffic sensors up there, the smarter traffic, optimizing traffic, and we can even uh, go in and look at the video film and uh, and actually get something out of the traffic patterns by looking at a, uh, a traffic camera. So data, 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 and it's a very important one. We did a, a partnership with a company called weather.com uh, last year, and it went so well that uh, after one year we actually uh, bought the company. And uh, the reason for doing that was to get access to all the beautiful data they have and also the platform they are running their system on. Weather is uh, so important for whatever you do. And I can already see the question coming on from uh, Vardenfall. <laughs> what about the weather? It is affecting whatever we're doing. If you're in retail, transportation, uh, no matter where you are, you are affected by the weather. And, uh, the weather is a huge business. Uh, we are handling 26 billion requests per day to the weather system, uh, to the weather.com system, and we generate four gigabytes of new data each second. So this is this is huge, but it's also affecting a lot of stuff. And if we look at some of the business uh, uh, things we can get out of this one, well, take insurance. If a, if it's a hailstorm is coming through your area, we see that some of the insurance is probably claiming around one billion dollar per year for a hail storm effects. If we could just avoid ten percent of that one, it will be a huge gain. Uh, if the temperature rises 5 Fahrenheit uh, in Texas, we know that going from 90 to 95 Fahrenheit, we know it will immediately have an effect on air condition. If we can predict that and get ready for that storm, uh, we can also earn a lot. And if the cold weather come in across our, our area, we can see that if the temperature drops more than 10 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, which is approximately 5 uh, Celsius, the sales in the shops are going down by more than 15%. If we are coming below 10 degrees in, uh, fall in, in the temperature, the retail is only affected by 2.9%. So it had a huge effect on what we are, we're doing the weather. We also need a new platform because we can't just do this with our on-premise tools, our old systems. We need something new and, uh, and uh, modern. We can see whatever you're buying today, if you're buying a coffee machine, this is probably also going to be software and that going forward because we need to connect it to the grid. If you buy a new car, it has an insane amount of, uh, of uh, new coded uh, line and software in it. We will see all the smart metering, the, uh, the uh, connected devices in, in your home. Already next year, we will have one billion connected things uh, in, in your home, and we need some new sorts of uh, data to uh, uh, platform to handle all those data. So that's why we declare ourselves to be open for, for data. And the question to you is, of course, are you open for data? Are you ready to actually take hand of all the, those kind of data? We heard earlier today that uh, someone was using uh, Spark, for instance. If you go in and try to download Spark and install it on your own laptop, you will see, wow, that's technical. There's probably very few in the room that's actually capable of actually 
download and install Spark on your own laptop. But if you want to try it out, you can just go in and use it as a cloud data service. And if you start by throwing some data in, and it's free the first month, months, if you start to throw in some data, why not put some predictive analytics on top of it or add some uh, Twitter insight or some weather insight and so on and so on. That's a modern platform for actually handling data going forward. You don't have anything on premise, you have it in the cloud, and if you just select the service you want to use, even on open source. And if you're going to be more advanced, well, you will probably take some of the uh, cognitive uh, APIs, APIs. The list is growing day by day, so, uh, so go in and look what is actually available today. Uh, we saw one earlier taking a selfie. If you're putting that selfie up on Twitter, uh, we're actually able to go in cognitive and look at the uh, image and decide, do we all see happy faces in the room or someone's boring uh, by the presentation, etc. and to put some human thoughts on, on that uh, picture. So some interesting and exciting things coming the uh, cognitive way. And by the way, being open for data means being totally open. Um, IBM is, uh, has decided to uh, go big time into open source because we can see the market is turning that way. So we were a huge contributor to the Hadoop development. We decided to be the number one contributor to the Spark uh, system. So if you're into Spark, and we heard Vodafone the earlier was using that one, Spark is going to be the centerpiece of whatever we are doing in, in IBM Analytics um, because we believe strongly in the Spark. We see a lot of requests on notebooks in Jupyter or Zeppelin and using the R and all those stuff. And probably some of the, the icons up here you, you don't even recognize. I for one don't need, uh, know exactly what the, these kinds of uh, open source systems actually do, but they are popping up and they are quite important and we need to embrace them. The last area was the, uh, the cognitive system. It's not something that will come in the future, it's, it's already here. We have over 1.3 billion calls to the system per month and it's growing. Do we need to be scared about the cognitive system? Well, if you're in a uh, call center, you should probably start to think about what you're going to do in the future. If you are a, a lawyer, if you're working in real estate agents, you should also think about how to handle this cognitive piece because it is going to change what you're doing going forward. We already see today call center being handled totally by computers. When you talk to the computer, you, you can't actually hear that it's a computer you're talking to. So it, it's, it's not something scary, but it's a huge opportunity going forward. So you need to put this into your platform. It's not something you will go to uh, implement and develop from, from day one, but you need to be capable of handling all the different data out there because that's the only way you can actually get some insight uh, out of this one, to combine them, to understand them, to put the data in context, to recommend actions and optimize outcomes and infuse intelligence in everything you do. You shouldn't take any decisions in your company without getting the insight that is uh, the foundation of that decision. Very important. And the last topic, uh, which is my personal favorite, is the, uh, the insight to actions. I see so many companies that has lots of data that is also quite capable of actually getting insight out of the data, but are losing the last part of it. They're not taking any action based on the insight we are getting. That's the typical uh, uh, problem we see with, uh, with our customers. So it's very important when you have the insight to take some action. Here's a list of some examples. You can download the slides afterwards. Let me just bring up a, a, a simple one, like the customer name and address. We use it for customer segments. But if we are only creating the segments and not using it in our marketing campaign, it doesn't bring any value at all. And then we shouldn't have done it. So very important, add all the other data like this last one, go into Twitter, see where demonstration will happen, and we can actually uh, put some law enforcement crew uh, based on that one. <laughs>